What's up with it, everybody? Welcome to episode 18, Low Riding with Lloyd, with the one and only Lazy Bone. What's up with it? What's happening, man? So I just brought you on here, man. I appreciate you coming oh, on, yeah, man. Most That's all I love, man. I had your boy position on here last time, so I, you know I we saw had to the follow episode. up. It was dope, you know what I mean? Yeah. So thanks for having me. Hey, shit, I'm glad to have you, my honor, man. Yeah, so uh, let's start off with telling everybody how has your music career changed your life? Well, my music career changed my life. It, actually is my life yeah, you know what i mean I like music been my life since like a like a small child but really since i was 18 years old i've been famous so yeah my whole life has been entertainment music just like that and how did you guys get discovered like how was your first hit i mean well <clears throat> a lot of people think easy e discovered us but mm -hmm. really we found easy e you uh -huh. know what i'm saying so we put an uh, a independent record out back in 1992. It was called Faces of Death, mm -hmm. you know? So back in Cleveland, we was doing our things, talent shows and things like that. So 93, we took a trip out here to California, yeah. try our hand in the game. All right, right. And we, uh, we got with Easy E, you know what I'm yeah, saying? You but rolled we, the dice. One way bus ticket. One way bus tickets all the way out to California. Right. Way before the internet, and you could push a button and be in somebody's right. backyard. You Without know. Without a doubt. So we was yeah. homeless out here, man. We did our thing out here in California. So was it a quick come up once you guys hit? Did it just take off, or was it a slow grind? Or I mean, if you count the ten years before uh -huh. Easy E, absolutely. Then it's not a slow grind. Absolutely. But, Five months, six months after we was with Easy E, it was a come up. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It depends. It depends on how you look at it. it no, took, yeah, it's all work. You're it, gonna count everything from the beginning to the end. You can't just count. You know what I mean? Just from the coming out here. So we had to plant the seeds. You know what I'm saying? Water the seeds, yeah. nourish that thing. Took about a decade. By 1993, we was on our. We was grown enough to leave Cleveland, Ohio. Met Easy E. Got thuggish, ruggish bone on the radio. Yeah, ninety four, and the rest is history. Yeah, man, I, this nineties were all my time spent. Most of the motherfuckers in prison, but uh, yeah, I, I loved it, man. I remember when you guys first came out, cause nobody in the world sounded like that. It was just something different that you had never heard before, man. I, I was really feeling that shit. Transcending, man. You yeah. know, I mean, we pride on being original. You know, what I mean, like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> back in the days it was a certain thing called beat biting right you know what i mean if you bit somebody's style or said somebody's lyric then you was a biter so originality was big back in the late 80s early 90s you know what i'm saying yeah. so bone thugs and harmony we wanted to stand out period right no y'all did you definitely did with yeah. nobody like you so just to say this if you weren't doing music, what do you th anything you think you might have been doing going on, you know, going through it all? Anything else that you like found that you like beat making, producing? I mean, if it if it wasn't if I wasn't a rapper, I'd probably be an attorney or something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I <clears throat> I get to the business of manager. Right. I would have took the management role. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So but music, like, it it really wasn't no other option. Yeah. No. Now putting something out now per, compared to putting it out on wax back in the day or c cassette or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How is it any different? You guys calling them? I asked him the other day. You guys calling them albums, projects? What do you guys label them as? It's not CDs no more, you know? Like what are you guys calling it? I mean, they still albums. Mm -hmm. They're just not pressed onto actual CD. Right. And pressed on actual vinyl and 48 track. Those was the, those were the levels, but. Yeah, we, you know, they projects. Right, right, no, for sure. Each each album is a different project, you know what I mean? But, and everything is digital now, so mainly releasing singles most of the time, but, you know, every now and again, a couple times a year, I drop an album. So you got a new project about to drop right now, don't you? I got a new one about to drop. I got a few that I just dropped. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Wanted Dead or Alive is an album that I got out right now. Um, Oh uh, man, I got psh, Annihilation is another album. Right. Um, November 21st, me and HC, one of my best dudes, producer, partner, you know, we got a duo album coming out called Eyes on the Prize. Nice. Hell and that's yeah. November 21st, this Friday, well, Friday, November 21st. So okay. Eyes on the Prize with Lazy Bone, HC the Chemist. I got um, <clears throat> featuring. 
I got a song with Position on there. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. Called All, All On It. Um, uh, me and HC The Chemist featuring Position. And man, it's a dope album. It's like, right. it's, it's, I'm back in the trap for some reason. No, absolutely. And if you guys don't know, check that shit out. You guys go check out his social <clears throat> media, follow all that. He's got a clothing line coming out. Yep. We got a hoodie over here. It's a, you know, thick, good, warm hoodie. You know, I can't even explain. It's got, we got to just see the motherfucker. Let's, let's take a look it's at a, it. It's a, it's a blanket. It's a hooded blanket. It reminded me of the Me Mexican tiger blankets, but you know, with a little bit different flavor. I don't want to put no hole in. I don't want to yeah. burn no hole nah, in my tight. shit. But yeah, man. So we doing these at LazyGear.com. You know what I mean? It's uh, for the holidays. I'm doing them all year long, but I got a new batch of merchandise coming out. Everything lazy, the, the, sleep gear. Every, everything lazy, laid back with the pajamas. Right, the, right. My last name, house, so house oh, yeah. shoes. Okay. House coats. I feel it. The, the thuggies. Yeah. Yeah, thuggies. There you go. I like that name. Your, that's a good your name. Your homegirls say that's call perfect. them thuggies. Hell that's yeah, that's perfect. We gonna call these thuggies then, but it's Don't different. Don't be biting that shit now. Y'all heard it first here. Don't be biting that shit. You can get the, you can get the original ones that I make or I can make them to order for you and all that. So it's like we got a, a, a real sweet situation with our merchandising team till we got the new mask, uh, a, lot of, a lot of new merch. Go to lazy, lazygear.com, L-A-Y-Z-I-E gear.com. So I'm getting one. I could have used that motherfucker many a cold winter nights because half of the motherfucker, my rides don't have heaters. I'm yeah. out there dipping. I'm getting one, I promise you. Yeah, we, I was thinking about these. Ride. I was thinking about these, like, you know, because we love football in Ohio. Like, if I had one of these at a Browns football fan? game. Yeah. Still a Browns fan? They never course. changed? I didn't know you lived out here a while. It might have changed over nah, the Raiders I or something. I can't never you know? switch on my city, That's man. That's right. But, you know. Hell yeah. You know, hopefully we do something sometime soon, but Browns, Cleveland, you yeah, know. Yeah, I've always fucked the Browns. Outside, man. cold. So, you know, we like to stay warm. So, this what this is all about, dude. The hoodie. Shit, I got so used to this Cali weather, all this cool weather blowing in. I feel like fucking. I need the motherfuckers now. You yeah. know, you wake up in the day, it's shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. By I, mid afternoon, you know, it starts it fading, cold, cooling down. Yeah. It turns into hoodies and jeans in this motherfucker. It, I tell everybody it's bipolar here. Yeah, they told me it never rained in Southern California. Yeah, it's they lied, rare. man. They lied. It, it get cold at night and everything. It does get cold. That's why I got these rag tops, though. Motherfucker, it's nice most of the time in California, and everybody says. it's how come you live in California? Because we have one season, summer. Right. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of spring in the evening, and I, lo I love this shit. That's right. You know what I mean? I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Well, I like this lemon drop, man. This yeah. lemon drop on. This is my 6'4". I, uh, I sold it to a buddy of mine, and he just went crazy. Uh, some shit happened with him, and he hit me up and asked me if I wanted it back. So I bought it back in the middle of the night thinking it was the same car. Well, shit, I got a little few little issues, you know what I mean? Scratches and dings and dents. So I got to run through it, man, and uh, make it. I'm thinking about painting it all black, to be honest with you. I do love this yellow, and everyone else does. But I like the lemon drop effect, you know? Yeah, Southern no. California make you think of sunshine, Yeah, you know? no, you're right about it. I call this one California Love. This, this one's my baby. This is the one I take out all the time. Check I even got the right purple here. headlights for the Lakers colors up in here, is keeping right? it all L.A. So Tupac did live and die in this thing right here. Yeah, he did. It was just plain Jane. It didn't have shit on it. I bought it from a dude and uh, it was just it didn't. Ha it was just plain. It didn't have anything. No hydraulics, no gold, no nothing. The engine didn't work. The transmission didn't work. It had just been set up and passed around since the video. And nobody could verify it. They didn't know how to. And nobody opened the goddamn glove box. The papers that registered to the plates in the video and the production mm -hmm. papers were right up in there. I, yeah, I opened it as soon as I got it. It was hard <clears> to get open. It was like jammed shut, but I got it open. It's my fault. Pac and Easy are two, two dudes, man, I wish I could have worked with and got to hang out with, man. Just, their personalities are huge. This motherfucker nice, though, man. I see you got the Pac dial oh, up yeah, in this yeah. motherfucker. That, that chain's fake. It's just a little car. All eyes on me. me. Yeah, you know, already. I shot with, uh, yeah, that's right. My style as a juvenile. Ran with the gang. Banging the meanwhile I gang. Love it. Specializing in ganking. ganking white Mexican brothers, brothers and, and others. others. Yeah, I know. I, I'm yeah. one of my absolute, easy, one of my favorites, man. And I, uh, I, I, I built, bought a 63 and followed the, the mint green just like his and decked it out just like, but it never felt the same because I knew it wasn't his. You know right, what I mean? Every, right. Even Little Easy hit me up and was like, hey, man, you got my dad's car? 
I said, nah, man, it's a clone. You know, yeah. I wish I could tell you I did, but I don't. Homeboy won't sell it. I've tried many a times. I've asked him, man. The motherfucker just man, well, won't he, entertain it. He got a classic from a classic. Yeah, so no, for sure. I wouldn't sell that mug either. You nah, know? yeah, I don't blame him. I got a chance to ride in that thing. Did though. you? Yeah, that was part of my uh, young adulthood. That was one of the highlights. You know I bet I mean? that was dope. What your favorite easy? You got a favorite easy experience? Oh, man. It's so it's so it's so many in a short period of time though. Yeah. I think my favorite thing with Easy E was just when he came and picked us all up in the in the bins. Yeah. Because he had a, a five hundred back then. You know, them was the big boys. The right, big right, bodies. right. I remember. So he'd come pick us up, and we'd be six deep in his bins, and I had shotguns sometimes, and just look over to my left and be like. This easy motherfucking easy. Shit, I bet that Couldn't was believe. dope. Couldn't it's believe it. Similar like, experience for me right yeah. now. Oh, hey, man, man. I, I grew up on this shit. I mean, I was born in 73, so, you know, all those 90s, I was doing, you know, you could right. be wild. Don't want to incriminate myself, but I spent most of my 20s in prison. I mean, it was, you know, there was a hood anthem. You guys were right up in there, you know what I mean? That crept when we came. I used to love that shit. Well, Still jam that shit. It's on my playlist, on one of my top 10. I went down in 1989 for doing what I was doing. Yeah. And that changed my life. So I knew music after that. Yeah. Because I got knocked up, caught up pretty good with a whole bunch of shit. You right, know what I'm right. saying? So when I got out of that, I was still I was still underage in 89 too, because mm -hmm. I was born in 74. Right, right. So it all that happened earlier, but all that led me to where I am now. So. Right. You, you, did you go as a celebrity or did you just went in your year? Nah, like my, my brother went as a celebrity. Flesh and Bone did, but... Was it any I different did for him? Well, shit, he was a celebrity. He had to hold down his thing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. They know them houseboys don't, don't fuck hey, around. No doubt about it. He's got to get yours. Point yeah. blank period, just so y'all niggas know, them houseboys don't play around. That's Jack. right. Yeah, man, it, it's a weird experience. But I will say, man, losing my 20s to it, I think I could have done a lot more in this time, but it built me, made me somebody completely different. That's that's kind of why I've always been into the street shit, these lowriders. It's just, that's what I've always been around, you know? Yeah. It wasn't like, I didn't, I don't know what people think by seeing me, the, you know, the blue eyes and the long hair, yeah. they must think I grew up a different way, but I just, I grew up in all different types of scenarios and, and most of them were not with much money. So the people I around had lowriders and I wanted to have that shit, you know, and I just got into it. And then getting these cars, it opened a lot of doors for me because I did one, the first guy I did a video with, I hit him up and was like, yo fool, you want to do a video with my car? He came here, we shot it right here at the house. And then once that went online, just people started hitting me up for all, from all over, just, you know, different levels from top levels to, you know, just regular old hood dudes wanting to do it. And you know what I mean? I treat everybody the same. I, I don't expect any special treatment, and I treat everybody the same. It doesn't matter if you're fucking got one view or ten zillion views. You know what Absolutely. I mean? I feel like everybody should be treated the same, and I think that's got me a long way in this shit. You know what I mean? Well, and know. I started this podcast, Low Riding with Lloyd. It's mostly like me being the low rider, meeting mm -hmm. up with different people, and uh, you know, just open the door, having you on here. I've had stupid young. I had a photographer, Mike Miller. I'm not sure if you know who he is. He took photos of Tupac, a lot of the famous ones, and uh, took a lot of the famous ones of Easy e the one where he's got the skateboard and the gloves mm -hmm. on and shit. That's actually his picture. And not a lot of people know him. Everybody knows his photos. And uh, that was a dope experience, man. That dude's got some stories right. to tell. He's really cool. All right, well, you but, know, uh, sometimes you got to go through the dark to see the light, man. Yeah, so no, without a doubt. We here. Yeah, you can't give we up, keep good. on grinding, you ain't lying shit. We grinding. We're in our 40s up in here looking we in our 30s. Whining. What's up? Yeah. We're still feeling in our 20s shit. Flat I out. I feel that shit, Talk you know what I him. mean? But uh, so anything else that you want to touch on? Like, uh, you know, pro I know you're doing, you, you just came back off tour, right? We just came back off tour. We was out on tour for about a month with uh, TLC. Oh shit, nice. Yeah, so now we're doing spot dates right now, now that that tour is over. We're getting prepared to do the versus uh, Bone Thugs against um, 3 6 Mafia. Oh, that's going to be a dope one. Shout, yeah. I, whoever thought of that, man, that was genius. De December 2nd. It's yeah. definitely going down December 2nd. So On versus. Yeah. 3 on 6 versus. Mafia, Bone <clears throat> Thugs and Harmony. Let's get it. That's going to be a good one. I can't so wait. So we got that going. I got the, the album with myself and HC The Chemist on the 21st of this month of November. Mm -hmm. um, Man, you know, we're getting ready for the holidays. We're going to go out here and throw a party like we do. Shit, hell yeah. You know, for all our people, man. We stay right. on the road. We do a lot of shows. I got music with 
uh, Mook and Kane in position. Kane and, just hit me up, man. Yes. And Dice. And Got to get him on here. HC the Chemist. And my son dropped uh, two singles this year. How old your son? He uh, 8 to 19. That's your oldest? No, my oldest is 29. Yes, you grandpa. My oldest yes. son. I'm a grand. I'm me a grandfather. Too. <laughs> me too. A few I've been times. one. I was like, my daughter, goddamn, he little slut. A few no, times. I was like so young, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, man. I mean, you know, just making music with the kids and just doing a whole bunch of things. As far as I, I do a lot of poetry. So I got a book Let's of poetry go. coming out called The Ancient Vehicle. Um, I got a few movie scripts over the years that I've been working on that I'm, I'm trying to bring to fruition. Shit, I so, got some shit cracking. Let's get something going. I'm, there's so many good things to do, man. I, uh, I've written a couple scripts. Man, I have some good, good ideas. I just, you know what I mean? You stay busy doing so many different things. I feel you. It's hard to push, you know, yeah. and some things that you want to do, and that takes a lot of time. But, uh, over, yeah, man. Over the years, I accumulated a lot, man. But, you know, follow me on... Um, especially on my Instagram because I, po I post a lot on Instagram so that's the real lazy bone at the real lazy bone uh, Twitter is lazy btnh and um, Facebook official lazy bone and of course the official bone thugs and harmony page you could always find out what's going on with the group yeah I like so. using that Instagram the motherfuckers threaten to delete me like every day though yeah. yeah, I'm like, man, just do the shit. I, but fuck, what can I do about it? I don't know what I'm doing to upset you, but just do it. I think people just complain but, or some shit. Well, you know, motherfuckers sensitive, man. They, yeah. Everybody crying about everything, you know what I mean? Like, people can't take jokes and shit like that, so. Nah, what about the Dave Chappelle? How you, I mean, I, th I think Dave Chappelle for president. That's my personal motherfucking opinion. If, if it offends you, fuck you. You know what I mean? I think that motherfucker's funny. I love how he talks. People are too goddamn sensitive these days. Think, you can't say shit. I just think he real, <clears throat> and he one of my favorite comedians. Me too. You know what I'm saying? So right up there, I swear with Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, I, I love him. I think that his shit be funny shit to me, great. like the way the way he, how witty he is, and the way he put words. You know, is yes. um, I really really enjoy him. If he making jokes about light skinned skinny niggas and shit, I still yeah, I funny. still laugh. He can make fucking fun of me the whole yeah. time. I'd laugh, man. The motherfucker's just funny, but you know, people need to wake up, stop being so goddamn sensitive. It's funny. I mean, shit, it's yeah. funny as a motherfucker. Yeah. Ain't shit gonna change. Half of the shit he's talking about is true. Well, you, they say you, sometimes you gotta laugh to keep from crying. Yeah, so. no, for I, sure. That's one of the I'd best parts. I rather laugh parts. than cry. Me too. Shit, I mean, I love life. I love. Going through all the shit I went through and then being able to do this type of stuff, man, it is dope to me. So I'm going to give you five words. We usually close up every episode with five words. First one going to be easy. -E. First thing that comes to mind. Uh, hip hop. Godfather of hip hop. Legend. Success. Determination. That's right. Family. Everything. Weed. Everything. You ain't lying in happiness. All of it put together. Yeah, that is, man. All that definitely does make happiness. I appreciate you coming on, my man. It's real. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you for having me. Another man. day, another Impala. See you guys for episode 19. Take it easy. Lazy Bone. L Burner, turn up, baby. Y'all go to lazygear.com and check out that new merch. You ain't low riding with Lloyd. Like, subscribe, and follow. See y'all, fools. Thank you.